Captain's Log, Stardate 311.3 As the deadline for solving the Einstein field equations near a neutron star approaches, the senior officers are getting restless. No one on board of Enterprise is familiar with the energy momentum tensor for electromagnetic fields, which is the essential ingredient in these equations. However, Commander Data has just located a YouTube channel in the Argo star system that might hold the answer. We are currently on a course to Argos and should reach it before our deadline. Oh, time for some breakfast. Commander Riker. Is there something I can do for you, Captain? T, Earl Grey, hot. Chop, chop. Yes, sir. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the series. In this video, we'll wrap up the discussion of electromagnetism in general relativity. We will conclude this by deriving the energy momentum tensor for electromagnetic fields. After this video, I would like to move on to solving the Einstein field equations. There are many interesting topics, such as the gravitational collapse, rotating black holes, gravitational waves and so on, that one could explore. Ok, so, in the last few videos we have derived the covariant form of Maxwell's equations. These equations are complete only to the extent that if I were to give you some arbitrary metric, you could in principle solve them for the electric and magnetic fields. However, if you wanted to know how the fields themselves contribute to the shaping of spacetime, and hence to the shaping of the metric, we would have to solve the Einstein field equations, where the energy momentum tensor on the right hand side comes from the electromagnetic fields themselves. So, in order to solve this set of equations, we need to know what this thing is for the electromagnetic fields. Let's quickly review what the various elements of the energy momentum tensor stand for. So, in order to construct the momentum energy tensor for the electromagnetic fields, all we have to do is to write down the electromagnetic energy and momentum and their fluxes. Let's begin with a Lorentz force per unit volume. Rho and J here are the density and current of charges that this force acts upon, and the force is generated by the charges themselves. In turn, this force will change the momentum of the charges. However, the momentum of a local region of space can also change by the passage of charges through the boundaries of that region. This momentum loss or gain is described by the conservation equation, where capital P is the momentum current located in this section of the energy momentum tensor for the charges. Combining these two sources of momentum change, we get this equation. The right hand side is a source of momentum. If f is zero, we just get the good old conservation equation. Ok, going back to this equation. Using Maxwell's equations and a few vector calculus identities, we can express the right hand side in this form, where s is the pointing vector and m the Maxwell stress tensor defined like this. I will not go through the steps here, because to do so would be kind of redundant. You can find these derivations in books or online. I have put links in the description box to a couple of websites that show all the steps in great detail. I put the words vector and tensor in quotation marks because they are not the spacetime for vector and tensor we are used to. We have seen in previous videos that the electric and magnetic fields are not real vectors, as we have been told as undergraduates, rather they are components of a four tensor. Ok, now that we have cleared up the terminology, we can call S and M vector and tensor respectively without getting confused. Going back to this equation, if we substitute for F the new expression and bring this term to the left hand side and this one to the right hand side, we can combine them like so. This equation looks like a local conservation equation, but for what quantity? To get a clue, we can integrate both sides over some volume and then use Gauss's theorem to write the right hand side as a surface integral. If we take this volume, we end up with this relation, which says that the rate of change of the total momentum of the charges is equal and opposite to the rate of change of the totality of this thing. But if the total momentum of the entire system is to be conserved, then this must be the momentum of the electromagnetic fields, 
since there is nothing else in the system apart from the charges that can have momentum. Now, let's take a region of space that is filled with no charges, only the electromagnetic fields. Then, these two terms will vanish. What we are left with is an equation of continuity for the local momentum of the electromagnetic fields, which would make minus m the momentum current for the electromagnetic fields. So, we now know most of the elements of the energy momentum tensor. But we still need the first row, which consists of the energy and energy current. For these, we can turn to Poynting's theorem, the proof of which is linked in the description box. The theorem states that the total rate of work done on a distribution of charges by the electromagnetic fields is equal to this. This term is just the rate at which the kinetic energy of the charges passes through an enclosed surface. If the electromagnetic fields are zero, then this reduces to the continuity equation for the kinetic energy of the charges. If we let the volume integral to go to infinity, these two surface integrals will vanish and we end up with an equation similar to the one for conservation of total momentum from earlier, but this time for the total energy. That means that this term must be the total energy of the electromagnetic field, which makes the integrand the energy density of the field. Going back to this expression, we again consider a region of space with no charges in it, which leads to the conservation equation for the fields. So, it turns out that the pointing vector is also the energy current for the electromagnetic fields. So, finally, the electromagnetic energy momentum tensor looks like this. As an exercise, you should show that this tensor can be written in terms of the electromagnetic tensor F, like this. All you need to do is plug in the elements of F explicitly and show that these two objects indeed match. And that's all for this video. Live long and prosper. Ad klaxon vis blaj blan arnik karnik ad trasula tras tras trasula.